What's going on boys and girls, this is Controlled Pairs with Controlled Pairs Gaming bringing you a Kerbal Space Program video the beta for Kerbal Space Program launched last week and with it a new selection of space plane parts here I'm taking a Mark III cargo space plane up into orbit circling the uh, curbing globe and then returning back to Kerbal Space Center this design is in its early stages, it's not as fuel efficient as it could be um, and, but it's something that I've continued to work on. So um, this is the third or fourth attempt at different designs that I've made, but it was the first one that was pretty successful, pretty efficient, um, and seemed to work pretty well. So this is about a 25 minute video. I've cut it down to about 12. I hope you enjoy it as I'm doing a post commentary here and I'll talk you through it. This Mark III cargo space plane is a single stage to orbit space plane. It's powered by six rapier engines. They are controlled in action groups uh, to toggle between both air breathing and closed cycle mode. Right now they are in air breathing mode. For such a large space plane, it's actually capable of a full vertical climb at 60 meters per second, as you see right now. In order to pilot the craft, we will take off, as you just witnessed, and turn completely vertical and climb to roughly 12,000 meters above sea level. As soon as we hit that uh, altitude, we will level off and begin to gain a horizontal velocity in order to maximize our air intake before we leave the atmosphere. Here we fast forward, you see us crossing the 13,000 meter mark above ground level, leveling off and starting to pick up speed. We went from a vertical attitude to uh, drop down to about 25 degrees in climb. Our rate of climb decreases, but our direction of travel is just right above the horizon. So we're gaining speed, gaining altitude, but maximizing intake air in order to, uh, it's just a standard SST, uh, a single stage to orbit takeoff, which most of you guys should be familiar with. Here you see those rapiers do start to overheat. However, when they're in air breathing mode, there is no major risk of them actually exploding or overheating. when you transition like you just witnessed to closed cycle mode they do start to overheat so ease up the throttle take it down to 70 percent nose up to near vertical and I'm watching my Kerbal engineer panel on the left side trying to push that apoapsis height up into about 70 kilometers above the surface right now the apoapsis is at 35 we are trying to push that to about 70 still easing back on the throttle as those right gears start to overpower but uh, the ship is relatively easy to control and now that we're starting to leave the atmosphere I'm not getting too much drag. The intakes to power the rapiers in open cycle and air breathing mode are, um, I have a total of um, 10 intakes for six engines. I've put those all on an action group and I toggle them off as I leave the atmosphere to reduce drag. Here you see I've pushed my apoapse up to 70 kilometers above the surface of the planet. So I go ahead and I tweak my maneuver node in order to circularize when I get into orbit. Fast forward, we get to that maneuver node, power back up my engines, and start our burn to circularize our orbit. Now, as I said earlier, the Mark III cargo plane that I've designed here actually took me a a few attempts. The uh, Mark III cockpit is completely redesigned and there's a bunch of new fuselages and all sorts of different space plane parts that have become available in .25 and .9 which is the beta that just released. Um, I found it very challenging to design a craft that was fuel efficient, had a uh, thrust to weight ratio good enough to actually get into orbit and circularize and still have a cargo bay and the capability to, to potentially carry cargo into orbit. Um, this was the first successful attempt and as you see here I managed to achieve orbit. I pushed my perhaps and apoapse both above 70 kilometers out of um, risk of falling back to the surface. Here we take Jeb out on an EVA. He's going to do a quick lap around the spacecraft to make sure it's in good condition in order to re-enter after we complete our orbit. Jeb turns his lights on there you can see the six rapier engines on the back of that Mark III. There's some clipping in the wings. I'm still trying to optimize that. However, just based on the structure of the wings, it's difficult sometimes to work with the stock parts and make them look as pretty as they really should. 
Our next phases, phases of testing will involve using those RCS thrusters that you see in order to achieve docking and deploy satellites and probes. This is simply a um, a proof of concept to, to demonstrate that the craft does function correctly. And I'll add the craft file to the description so you guys can fly this thing and uh, let me know what I can do to improve it, see if you make it work a little bit better than I did. After inspecting the craft, Jeb's going to come over here and close up the cargo bay and then make his way back over to the crew cabin and board the craft and prepare for reentry. All right, back on board, we are getting ready to uh, execute our injection burn and prepare to re-enter Gerben's atmosphere. So here I've directed our pilot Jeb to orient to a retrograde position so that he can burn against our direction of travel in order to reduce our orbital velocity and fall back to the planet's surface. I go ahead and I start the burn. You see the Apoaps and periaps falling. And our liquid fuel is still up over 500. I've got plenty of units left to reduce that, uh, reduce our trajectory back to Kerbal Space Center. And then once we re enter the atmosphere, transition those rapier engines into air breathing mode and have plenty of fuel left to navigate to the runway. Now our center of mass has changed since we took off. Fortunately, there's only one main fuel tank on this craft. Uh, so the center of mass doesn't change too much, but it does change. So upon re-entry, we get better lift because we're a little bit lighter. However, um, it's not quite as balanced as when we took off. Um, but I have noticed that if upon re-entry, if you just direct the pilot to um, stay oriented prograde, you have a nice clean re-entry. I haven't lost control or had any issues thus far. So we start our re-entry as soon as we get through the upper levels of the atmosphere. I will reopen the uh, air intakes, all 10 of them, and I will toggle the engines to air breathing mode and kick them on in order to start navigating to Kerbal Space Center, which you can actually see there. Uh, about 10 kilometers to our front. Now we're still traveling over a thousand meters per second. I know that I'm going to overshoot the runway and so I start thinking here that I'm going to have to fly past it and then turn around and um, come in from the ocean side and land from west to east rather than from east to west. So I've changed the engines back to air breathing mode. You see the nose wants to dip a little bit, which is fine because we're losing altitude. But as we get the thrust from those engines, I gain control of the aircraft back. And it actually flies surprisingly well. A lot of times these larger space planes are uh, very unstable, especially after reentry.
Having now passed the Kerbal Space Center, we go ahead and start banking left to pull the nose of the aircraft around and line up for our final approach to the runway. I go ahead and turn my brakes and my lights on just so I don't forget whenever I land. Now having performed just about a flawless flight, it uh, could have been more fuel efficient and a little bit, bit better flown here and there, but for the most part a pretty flawless flight, ascent and orbit, and then we come back around for this landing and you'll see here as I come in on the landing I flare a little bit too hard right at, at touchdown and I actually lose two engines as a result. However, uh, thank you guys for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Please feel free to rate, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions about Kerbal Space Program or any of the games I play, feel free to leave a comment or shoot me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And after some practice, you might be able to make flawless landings such as the one that you're about to witness. Thanks for watching and have a good one.